brand new Optimus Prime attack mode. Flame toys. So let's see what these guys got in store. See if they're any good. <clears throat> box is a little flimsier than your normal um, Bandai box. Box art's pretty cool. Not mad at that. Got instructions. Companies from Hong Kong. So let's see if we got some good English in here. What's going on? Sticker sheet. Uh, looks like it's over most of the vents, which I would assume these are. We're going to color those in, so I'm not worried about that. And this is for the axe. And I think I'm going to paint the axe maybe in a metallic red. Maybe try to do like an energy effect. Not sure. Definitely not using this giant sticker. Got to see where that goes. Um, that might be just in his uh, shoulders. Where in that case, I probably will have to use it. Because if that's not raised, we got a problem. Yeah, might have to use these. So these might be the only ones I have to use. But we'll see. These might be helpful. These are the little lights on the shoulders. May or may not use those. What else we got here? So this would be like their PC plastic. Very rubbery. A lot more flexible runner than uh, Bandai's. Yeah, these parts are very rubbery. Alright, so this blue is looking really good. Very minor amounts of swirl in it. So it's pretty good. I think it's passable. Seems to almost have like a texture to it. It's not hyper smooth. It's almost got a little bit of a matte to it. So that's interesting. And we got uh, some nice darker parts. And again, they kind of have this matte, which almost makes them look a little bit like they want to be um, a gunmetal. I think it's just because of that matte's reflecting the light a little different in spots. So it's a slight texture that gives like a matte effect. This kit should be pretty quick to build because... I mean, the runners are all red, blue, so it's going to be really easy to figure out where stuff goes. Um, they are, of course, numbered like any good uh, kit should be. The runners don't have letters, though, it doesn't look like. Oh, they do. Just really small. Red has that similar matte to it. <clears throat> It's really interesting, because I'm wondering if you sand this stuff, what happens to that finish? I would assume it just goes away. Um, and it's not undergated at all. So, well, in a few spots it is, in other spots it's not. See how strategic they were with that. Even their plastic has this weird, uh, the plastic bags have this weird matte effect to them too oily. I don't know. It's weird. Their bags are weird. Another good blue one. You get a little bit of like a swirl from the mold and a couple of these pieces here. So maybe I will change my mind and paint the whole kit later. Rays are cool. This is the uh, spine right here. Nice little bit. I think this is on the chest. That will be the uh, right below the glass area, starting off the chest piece. 
And then this runner is all weapons. That looks like the backing of the chest part, maybe a neck joint. So there are some things otherwise and just weapons, but the weapons take up most of this runner. All right, get rid of that, get rid of that. And lastly, nope, two more. So this bag has wheels. And what looks like gas tanks, I guess. Well, those are rims. These are the wheels. Pretty cool. Got a nice pattern on them. And then those clear parts. Which look pretty good. So let's look at these directions. They have the nice layout of all your uh, runners. So you can easily double check them. Only uh, two were doubled. And then this is how they do, how they're showing you how to build stuff. So most cases are not showing you arrows, they're just telling you the piece, where to grab it from. Um, they show two views of this one, which is kind of nice. And then they're doing stickers as you go along. So there's always little stickers for the lights on the top of the uh, chest. A couple of times they tell you to, uh, you know, push something in this direction, but, Simple enough. They're colored, which is kind of nice. So this will make it really quick to grab stuff because I know exactly what runner I'm looking for without even have to look at uh, letters. I like that. That's actually genius. So let's see how fast I can build this. I'll be right back with the magic of video. Since I know I'm going to end up doing some painting on this thing, I, uh, I start to open up some of these holes and make them a little bigger. So all you have to do is just stick your knife in here. You can do this with a pin drill too. And just give it a little twirl, open these holes up a little bit bigger. I'm not gonna open all of them probably, or not too much. I just wanna make them slightly bigger so I can get these pegs out later. All right, hopefully you guys can see this. But there's definitely some clever now we usually see in Bandai kits the usage of ridges to lock parts in. So these ridges on both sides are locked in by spacers on these sides. So when this goes in here, it's a nice snug fit and it won't pull out. Um, this part up here was a peg that was actually fatter at the end of the peg and the hole it went into got wider at the bottom of the hole. So when you push it in, there's a nice reassuring snap. You heard that snap, you knew it was in there. It doesn't want to come out. I'm sure I could pull it out, but generally it doesn't want to come out. So there's a lot of clever ways that they're making these pieces really locked together, and I'm liking it so far. All right, check out this uh, knee right here. So <clears throat> we got this big old piece. That's a husky knee piece, right? And we got another piece up here that goes to the thigh. This piece goes in here like so. And look at that. It can rotate. But then it has a block. So it can't go too far. See that? And rotates. And this one up top has range too. Pretty clever. I like this system of blocking, stopping yourself from going all the way. All right, we are back. It took me a little longer than I thought. Obviously, they have a change of venue. Um, have it all laid out nice like this. Not that I was trying to show off and put it all together for you at the end, but that's how the instructions have it. Just kind of snap it all together at the end. So let's do it. Head. Pretty good detail. Um, Mr. Hobbies has come out with some super small LEDs towards December. 
pretty sure you could fit one of those in there. And I think that would really make the head pop with some eyes that light up. Come on. There we go. That was one of the interesting things about this kit. A lot of stuff snaps when you put together. So, you know, Bandai usually doesn't have that loud snap sound. So that was a little scary a couple of times, how much force you have to put into something. But when it snaps, you know it's in there. These ears actually, uh, or whatever these things, oh, they move a little bit and they can also fall off. But yeah, you can kind of position them a little bit where you want. They probably have about 10 to 15 degrees of movement. They actually have a spot there to stop you from moving into a stupid looking spot. Head is uh, really moving up. It's going 360. We got 360. We can touch our chest with our chin. We can lean all the way back. Almost all the way back. Pretty good to the side. To the side. That chin movement and the forward. I like that forward motion too. So you can have them really looking like down if you're into those kind of poses or forward a little bit. Have them looking real tall there. So very nice neck. I like this neck joint. Two balls in there. Alright, let's move to this uh, torso. So you got this spine looking thing. Really nice detail. Pop this in here and now we got who got nice little ab uh, extension there so we can get some really nice husky like leaned hunched forward type of looks here oh. so remember I cut my uh, or actually I opened up the uh, female part of the post connections so that I could easily pull it apart the paint. So eventually I'd have to glue this together. All right, so now where are we at? So as you can see, Got a nice little bit of arm rotation to the front. Actually, a lot there. That's kind of crazy. That's probably too much. They over exaggerated there, but it's always nice to have. So now don't ding the kit if you see parts falling off as I'm working with it. Because remember, I did open up the parts so it could easily come off for my paint and then I'll glue them down. But from what I could tell, a lot of times the fits are real tight. This is, I really like how the hands are kind of oversized, which I think is cool for this style of kit. It's not really realistic, so I think it works really well with the style. Another nice click there. So now we have upper body. So yeah, all the tolerances are super tight. You feel like you're gonna break something that's so tight, but didn't break anything yet. Skirts are pretty cool. This should be easy, hopefully, maybe not. Everything is tight. There's a couple of things where I pushed the PC part through and like it took off a layer of plastic inside the police PC part. So whew. Yeah, you 
just gotta work these on nice and slow. Like I did too good of a job of loosening up this uh, upper body here. I'm making sure I can take it apart. Now it just wants to fall apart. So this is cool though. You can see how some of the stuff went together. Um, this was an interesting connection. I guess time will only tell this works really well, but it's a side to side joint. That's what gives it this whole ability to fly so far out. Yeah, definitely loosened uh, those holes in the chest too much. They were the first ones I did pretty much. And I, uh, then realized shortly afterwards that the tolerances are probably just right. I need to do that. Or not so aggressively, at least. So he will definitely need some glue in the future. But that was on me, not on the build. So what I was trying to do, and I, I just made a quick uh, improvement to the kit. There's way too much play in how far the arms can extend inside the chest. So I just took a little bit of runner, cut it, and jammed it in there to stop that for now. I think eventually I will putty it all in so it's nice and tight. I can completely fix the problem. So not that it's going to be a hard fix, but you know if you're a beginner, just look out for it. Uh, or just be very careful. Don't loosen it up like I did in the chest, and maybe it'll stay together better anyway. But uh, I already have some good ideas how to fix that, and it's not going to be hard. Let's look at this articulation, though. Foot is on a ball joint. It's got a little bit of side to side, which is nice. It's actually got two joints. It's got one in the front of the foot, too. So you get a nice little bit of play up here. Side to side, front to back. Um, this uh, darker metal color looks really good. Almost looks like a gun metal. And the way that finish, the finish really works on that color. It looks great on the gun, on the axe, right there. All right, so the knee's got pretty nice posability. Look at that. Hips are pretty good. A little blockage by the skirt, obviously. But at least the skirt's already split in half. So it can get up there. Pretty good. Nothing crazy. All right, so arms very carefully. Really good elbow extension. Scratch his head, no problem. Call in the uh, airstrike, whatever. So that turns all the way out. Double joint it in the elbow. Um. It's got a nice little wobble here. This part is a lot like current Bandai kits where it just kind of pushes up this uh, cuff here. Um, but it works well. It's staying in place. Got a decent amount of movement in the uh, wrist. And there goes the chest again. So yeah. Definitely made it too loose. That was on me. Alright. So we did the head already, I believe. Head's looking good. Nice side to side, up, down, all around. 
You can go 360, look at his back. Don't know why you'd want to ever do that, but he can do it. Uh, how high do these arms go up? So we get to about there. So that's pretty good. I guess we'll get action poses with the axe coming across like that. Another cool thing about these kits with the guns, they have those uh, connectors in the hands. They have the little plug part in the hand, which is really nice. Um, obviously, the hands are fixed and enormous, which is cool that they're enormous. It'd be nice at this price point to get some posable hands, but I get it. They're kind of new to the game, probably not ready for posable hands yet. Here's the back view. He's a little skinny in the back, especially in the waist. You know, you kind of get a different view from the front, but he is skinny in the waist. What's cool is these little pegs can hold the gun back here too. And it's not like you gotta flip anything out. The gun's designed to have those little plugs right in there already. That was pretty smart. Plug that in the back there, and you already got the gun being held. Then the axe has, looks nice and clean here. You pop that off, and now you can uh, pop it in the hand. So right here, he is holding that massive axe. That axe is huge. He's holding it with no problem, which is great. This guy's big. So, yeah, he probably is a little, about a high-grade build. Somewhere like a high-grade RE build. A little more complexity because it feels more like you're building a Kodabi Kia kit. So it has some weird stuff you're not used to. But, uh, yeah. Not the greatest at posing for sure. Especially something that looks like this. I'm not even sure how to get his poses right. You don't get him here. So, all right. Chest is still together. Looking good. Watch me put this on and the whole thing falls apart. So that's pretty good. That's not a, too bad of a pose to start with. I'm sure you could do something better. A little bit looking at you there. All right, so yeah, I gotta find some good poses. Um, figure out some good poses for him. He has really good articulation though, so I think you're gonna be able to hit some insane poses. Uh, I mean, they show you right here. That's a nice knee shot right there. That'd be a fun one to get to. Ah, over to short. Ah, that's a good one. Definitely has articulation for that. All right, so after a couple more headaches with those, that damn chest opening up because I opened it up too much, and the fact that there's way too much play in the shoulders, got into this nice, pretty nice pose right here. So again, shoulders, way too much play. Possibly could be my fault. Maybe I got the part I'm wrong, but I looked at it several times. Don't see how I'm doing it wrong. So they just gave it too much room to move in there and loosen itself out. So that's something hopefully they'll get together in their next wave of kits. It is a pretty easy fix with some, you either do styrene in there or you could putty in there and just make the tolerances less inside. Just fill in some of those gaps where stuff is falling, falling apart in. Um... This thing's husky, thirty dollars. It's. I wish I had a uh, MG or one one hundred around, but check it out next to a uh, dabbing high grade RX seventy eight. So he's got a little bit of height on him, and he's a little more squat or spread leg to cross right now than the RX. So that is a pretty good height. He looks menacing. Um, the blue and the red look great. He needs, he has some grills right here 
that you could either do like a chrome or maybe this gunmetal color. I'm going to definitely hit this piece here with chrome. Most likely his rib area there in the stomach with chrome. Not sure about the waist. Not sure how I feel about that yet. So definitely like the thighs. Probably aluminum. I think I'm going to do two colors. I'm going to do like aluminum and then chrome. Chrome this gas tank. Chrome the shoulder thing. Where did another one go? I right, dropped it on the floor. Yep. So those little pipes that go on his shoulders, glue those in. They're going to keep popping out. Once he painted it up, just glue them in. Not worth the problems. That's probably the only thing that didn't have a tight fit. Everything else fit in really, really snug. Almost too snug where it was scary. So, final thoughts. I think builds like a Kota Bikia more than builds like a Bandai kit. Um, it's a little more intuitive than the Kota Bikia kits I've done or help people with. But that's because they were Zoids. Or they were um, Zoids and Enders that had some weird backwards joints and stuff like that. So, otherwise than that, probably about the same difficulty as a Kota Bikia kit. Uh, definitely uses different joints than you would see in uh, most Bandai kits. Um, pros and cons. So, the red plastic was the worst plastic. It didn't cut out that bad, but it left some pretty bad stress marks. And when I tried to trim it up with a knife, which I usually use and use in other parts of this kit, it gave me the most problem in the red. Where I was end up slicing into the red. So the red was just a little weird. Um, the light gray cut really well. The blue was in between. But it was more to what I'm used to. Um, so we just talked about the price. For the, si for the size, the price is really nice. Um, the finish of the plastic. Little hit or miss for me. And why I say that, I say you want this kit to be uh, glossed out. I don't know if that finish is going to mess up your gloss coat. So that's kind of the miss I have, but I like how the finish straight out the box looks satin. So that's a really nice kind of matte, kind of satin look. Very nice out the box, especially if people are not going to paint. comes out the box looking good. Still need to do a little touch-up paint then give it a little more, uh, a little more flavor there. Um... I wish the wheels were rubber. I feel like at that price, I gotta throw some rubber wheels in, but they look good in plastic. Just wish they were rubber. Hands not being posable. That's another thing. I mean, Kotobukiya usually doesn't have posable hands either. So I guess these other companies haven't got around to making those affordable add-ons or part of the kits. Um, so the design aesthetic is definitely a pro to me. I love this aesthetic. They could have easily done an old school prime. This is licensed, so I would assume they could have got old school prime, but I think this is a great look. Uh, posability is good. Obviously, we have problems with the chest. Beyond that, the posability seems really good for this kind of build, kind of a little bit better than a high grade or RE. It has better posability than those two, except for maybe like an Origins kit, might be the only thing to mess with it. Uh, like I said, the fit of some parts is a little scary because you feel like you're going to break something, but nothing broke. Um, and the engineering is interesting. In most parts, it works, except for that chest where I think they try to go too far with it. They try to push the limits. So we will fix that with our own engineering. And otherwise, than that thing looks amazing. So hopefully, I mean, I'm working on the new store uh, this week coming up. But if I get a little bit of time while I'm waiting for zoning or something weird like that, I will get in there and try to drop some paint on this thing. And we will see how this thing really turns out. Because I think that's where the match is going to happen is on the paint. But right out the box, this is pretty. Definitely worth the money. Definitely if you're a Transformers fan, grab it. A mech fan, grab it. Badass. Have this thing find a Jesta. I just don't know what scale Jesta you'd have to get. <laughs> Probably the master grade. And check out this. Do not do one of these unless you hate yourself. The directions were so ass. These are one of those things. There's a, I believe he's uh, Swedish or someone from the Netherlands. That uh, they, he has full size ones that walk along the beach. And the wind powers them. 
basically, if I had this in front of a fan, it would sloppily walk as if we lost the piece. But as you can see, the legs are starting to move. And this thing actually can walk if you put it in front of a fan. But it also likes to fall apart. So it was a very tough kit to put together. I just scrapped the, the directions and figured it out on my own. I was like, I don't need sticking directions. I'll figure this out on my own. But that's all I got. Definitely cop on these primes. Still have a decent amount of them. But if you can't get them from me, get them from somewhere. Because this is a nice kit. And I will talk to you later. Peace.